Hello YouTube, today we will continue our discussion regarding Angular and Firebase. In the previous video, which I'll be linking as an interactive card at the top right hand corner, we talked about how to incorporate Angular Fire, which is the Angular team's official Firebase binding, into our Angular project. And today, I'd like to discuss how to set up your local emulators environment so that when you're developing your project, you're going to be connecting to your local emulators for your backend operations instead of doing everything on prod. So in order for us to do that, first of all, we will need to go to the directory of our project and run npx firebase init emulators. And this command will commence the setup process for our Firebase emulators for the different services. And at this stage, we're being asked to select the services for which we would like to have our local emulators for. So we're going to have emulators for Firestore, Auth, and Storage. So this is perfect. So we're simply going to hit Enter. So at this stage, we can see that the emulators have been finished setting up in terms of the port number configurations. So for auth, we're using 9099 for Firestore, whatever. We can see all this information here. And we're simply going to input Y to instruct the command line interface to start downloading the files for the emulators. And after that's done, the next step is that we're going to simply hook our emulators into our app config file. And there's one caveat. You can see that currently when we're injecting the providers for our Firebase services into our project, all the services are pointing to prod. However, if we would like our project to be able to differentiate between the prod environment and the dev environment, I would personally approach it like this. I would go to, I would go to my SRC folder. And let me open up the projects window. So I would open my SRC directory and make another directory called environments. Environments. And inside of the environments, I'm going to create two separate environment.ts files, one for prod and one for dev. So I'm going to create an environment.ts file. And this, this file is going to be for the dev environment. And I'll also create an environment.prod.ts file. And this file is essentially going to let the project know globally we're in the prod environment. So if we open up these two files in the text editor, for each file, we're simply going to export an environment object. For now, the environment object is simply going to have one property called production. And it's going to be a Boolean value. So for the dev environment, it's going to be false. Whereas for the environment.prod.ts, we can simply copy this. The production property is going to be evaluated to true. And after we have done that, and now we're going to go back to our app.config.ts file. And first of all, import the environment file that we have created. From the appropriate directory. And inside of the provider functions for the Firebase services, we could do something like this. So for example, for the Firestore, instead of returning the Firestore object, we can first check if the current environment is prod or not. If the current environment is not production, meaning we're in the dev environment, we would have to first generate the Firestore object and cache it in a variable called Firestore and then pass it into the connect Firestore 
emulator middleware. Let me make sure that this import is from the right place. Okay, it's from the right place. And this function is going to take three arguments. As you can see, the first one is going to be the Firestore object. And the second argument is going to be the name of the host, in which case, in our case, it's going to be localhost. And the port number is 8080. By default, it's always going to be 8080 for Firestore, but we can simply check it in the firebase.json file. And we can see for the emulators, yes, Firestore is pointed at port 8080. And at the end of the function, instead of return and get Firestore, we're going to return Firestore. So this block, let me format the code, and this block is essentially doing a couple of things. First of all, it's going to use the get Firestore function to generate the Firestore object, and it checks for the current environment. If the current environment is production, this statement is not going to be run, meaning it's going to directly connect to the production environment for our Firestore. However, if the, if the current environment is of development, then it's going to pass this Firestore object into the connect Firestore emulator middleware and connect and set up our local emulator environment for Firestore, which is going to be pointing at uh, localhost port 8080. And we will need to do the same thing quickly for the storage provider. Instead of just returning the get storage function, we're going to first cache Firebase storage in a variable called storage with the get storage function. And then we're going to check for our current is it prod or not. If it's not production, meaning if it's if we're working with the local development environment, we're going to pass the storage object that we have just cached in the variable to the connect storage emulator middleware. Similarly, the arguments is going to be storage, the host name, and the port number. And we can quickly check if the port number is in alignment with what is being specified in the firebase.json file. And at the end of this block, we're going to simply return storage. And the mechanism of how our Angular project is going to effectively differentiate between the prod environment and the dev environment is that we would have to instruct the build process to substitute the environment.ts file with the environment.prod.ts file when we're building our project for the production environment. So for us to do that, we need to go to the angular.json file. Let me minimize the terminal window and go to the configurations key. Configurations. We're going to go under the production property and create another property called file replacements. You can see that the ID is already prompting us that this is a potential key that we can configure. And inside of the array, we're going to create an object that contains two properties. The first property is going to be replace. And the value is going to be the file, the path of the file that we would like to substitute. So it's going to be src slash environment slash environment.ts file. And we also need to add another key value pair with the key width. And the value is going to be the path of the file that we would like to substitute this file with. So with this in place, every time we run the ng build command, during the command during the build process, the compiler is going to take this file, the environment.ts file, and substitute it with environment.prod.ts file. And now to show you guys that this is working, let's quickly create some dummy code so we can test it out. So if we go to app component.ts file, go to the template file and delete all the unnecessary stuff and simply create a button
and for the event handler we're simply going to quickly write something to our Firestore database. So inside of the, we already have the Firestore set up and let's just do this, let's just do this. And for the text, we can do something fancy. We can do, okay, we're going to import the environment. And uh, for the text, we're going to do a ternary operator. If environment.production, meaning that this is when we're working with the production environment. We're going to write connected to prod. If not, we're going to write connected to emulators. Emulators. All right, so inside, so now we're going to go to our terminal and start our Firebase emulators. And for us to do that, we're going to do Firebase emulators colon start. You can see that the emulators are being set up. And in the separate window, we're simply gonna do, okay, we're going to do go to our projects directory and do ng and you can do either ng serve or npm run start we're going to run ng serve the emulators are being run we can go to the ui to look at all the different services that, that are being turned on we have authentication in firestore and storage and now that the app is running we can Go to our application, which is currently at 4200. And in this Firebase Emulators UI window, we can go to the Firestore emulator and uh, quickly let's split it. Click on the button, and you can see that, yeah, the tech is saying connected to emulators. And now let's temporarily stop all the operations and let's build the application out. Theoretically, after we have built our Angular application and if we serve it with HTTP serve, when we click on this, on this very same button, a record will be written to our Firebase production environment's Firestore database. So let's test it out. So we're going to do ng build. And after the build process has been finished, we can see that it's in our dist slash angularfire dash demo directory. So we, let me see if I have that package installed. Okay, so I already previously installed the HTTP server. So with that package installed, we can simply do HTTP server dist and the application is being served at 8080. If we open it up and when we click on click me and go to our Firebase console, which is the production environment and go to the appropriate project, go to the Firestore Firebase, you can see, yes, we have written the record connected to prod. And the very last thing that I would like to touch on, which is going to be bonus, is to persist the data that we have generated during the session in which you're interacting with your Firebase emulators to a local directory so that the next time when you start up your emulators, you have some sort of persisted record instead of having to start your emulators every time from scratch. 
in order for us to do that instead of starting your firebase emulators like this we're going to add some additional options we're going to instruct our firebase emulators to export on exit and the value after the equal sign the, the value after the equal sign is going to be the directory the name of the directory we would like to export our data to so we're going to say emulators export we'll also add another additional flag called import and the value of this flag is going to be the name of the directory that we are exporting the data to so that every time we run this command every time we start up the emulators it's going to look for this directory and import all of the data in there into the current emulator session emulators export so when we run our emulators like this you can see that now that the emulators is running and we would need to start up the app and go to the application and click on the button and go to the Firebase UI, Firebase Emulators UI and if we look at the database Yep, this is the record that we have just written to. And when we exit the emulator session with Control C, you can see that in your project files, a directory will be created. And these are the exported data for your Firebase emulators. So that's it, guys. That's all I have to say about setting up your Firebase local emulators. We talked about how to create different environment files for your project's different environments and how to substitute the environment files with the configurations production file replacements property and we also talked about how to conditionally provide the firebase services into your application and how to persist your firebase emulators data with the additional firebase emulator start flags i hope you found the video to be informative and i'll see you in next week's video bye bye